Forbes Media Chairman and Editor-in-Chief Steve Forbes. You, you cannot put a shine <laughs> on this pig of an economy that has been a burden on every single working American, Steve. Now, he's tried every lipstick he could to put on the pig, <laughs> and it's not working. And the, the inflation numbers understate the real cost of rise in the cost of living because it leaves out interest rates, the interest you pay on your house, interest you pay on the car, interest you pay on credit cards. That's not counted as a cost of living, which is preposterous. That's why those numbers are really fake numbers in the sense that people's real bills each month are going up faster than their wages are increasing. So uh, I guess, you know, no one's ever gone out of business being cynical in Washington. And I thought I was pretty cynical. But this administration, you know, it seems like every time I've lost track of the number of times they've had to revise the numbers. So it's entirely possible that the numbers that they have released are actually even worse than they're letting on. But we won't know how bad they are until sometime after the election. Well, the number today, the talk about lipsticks and pigs. No, no way you can make that one smell nice. It look nice at all. 111,000, take out 29,000 revision in previous months. And if you look over the past year, full-time jobs have gone down 500,000. Part-time jobs only up 550,000. So the quality of what's happening with the job market is going down, not up. One reason why the markets are saying, uh-oh. Right. And if you look at the household survey, which is used to calculate the unemployment rate, the U.S. economy in the last year has only added 57,000 jobs. 57,000. And that's over a year, not a month. I want to get to this because Biden and Harris are all over the moon about the, how awesome the economy is. But Ewazi Warren, or Liz Warren, isn't as pleased, posting on X, quote, Fed Chair Powell made a serious mistake not cutting interest rates. He's been warned over and over again that waiting too long risks driving the economy into a ditch. The jobs data is flashing red. Powell needs to cancel his summer vacation and cut rates now, not wait six weeks. This is not a monetary problem. These bozos in the White House are running a $2 trillion budget deficit and to naught because the economy is sucking wind. Steve? Well, uh, Senator Warren should go on a permanent vacation. <laughs> so should most of her colleagues, sadly, with the policies that they're proposing and uh, put, trying to push through. If Kamala Harris gets in and the Democrats control both houses of Congress, this economy will go into, and I'm marking my words carefully, a depression. Those tax increases will kill investment. The regulations they're putting on now, unprecedented the avalanche in American history, those are going to start to really hit the economy. You know, dishwashers don't work anymore. They want to take away your air conditioning. Even in New York, you can't get uh, wood burning stoves for pizzas anymore. It's ridiculous. And all those things raise the cost of living. So it's not just the Fed undermining the integrity of the dollar, it's these government added costs. And by the way, the Fed should learn you don't fight inflation by depressing the economy. You do it by stabilizing the dollar, doing what Reagan did. How about that? Cutting taxes and reducing regulations. And guess what? People do amazing things. They progress. They move ahead. That's real. The progressives yeah. are the American people unleashed, moving ahead. Yeah. Encourage people to work by letting them keep the money they make by working. All right, I want to move to this real quick. Um, the Senate blocked a bipartisan tax bill that the left claims is denied cash for impoverished children, but reality has blocked handing out more freebies to people without jobs. The debate around child tax credits weaving its way into the 2024 election, Politico uh, painting it as the latest culture war pointing the finger at J.D. Vance. Is the child tax credit uh, a, a part of the culture war? <laughs> they, the, the words don't mean anything anymore. Right. That's why I can't believe anything that comes out of Washington. Just as during the Cold War, he couldn't, and even today, he can't believe anything that comes out of the Kremlin. And so in terms of child tax credit, what they should do, how about a flat tax, where you do have a generous exemption for adults and for children, and that's it. So that way, a family of, of four would, guess what? Their first $53,000 of income would be free of federal income tax. Now, that's, uh, that, I'd, I'd like to fight that culture war. Let the, <laughs> let, let the people have the money they create. Where have I heard the flat tax idea before? Oh, that's right, Steve Forbes. <laughs> that's why I can't wait to have J.D. Vance actually debate whomever Kamala Harris picks or actually to have anyone throw 
this garbage in the Dems' faces because they're lambasting J.D. Vance when all he is talking about is something that the Democrats support and then some because their pants are in a knot that this bill failed in the Senate because it was more child welfare to Americans. That's why they're upset because it was it would make some, for some families more of the child tax credit refundable, meaning if you don't even pay any income tax, you get more money back. Well, the thing is, again, make it simple and the American people will take it from there. Instead of all this convoluted stuff done in the name of the people, but hurts families, especially with children, trying to raise their incomes. We've already seen in this jobs report, they're being pushed behind, not having a chance to get ahead. That's the bottom line. So let's get away from this culture war stuff. How did the Ameri unleash the American people? How about that? Steve, you're the best. Good Thank you. you. Great Steve to see you, sir. Forbes. Good to Thank see you. you.